All right, folks, we are one game down in this round of four series between Idra and White Round. The second map is going to be the Shattered Temple. Indeed it is. And I don't think Idra is going to do the same thing here. I think that yesterday, Rhett opened up with Mutilus, beat down White Raw very easily, and then White Raw started to almost blind counter Mutilus. So I think that Idra's kind of mentality going into the second game is I'm just going to change it up, stop these blind counters or direct counters to this play. Yeah, I would think so, honestly. And here we go. Shattered Temple is the place to be in close air positions. We've uh, got Evil Genius's Idra. He's in the blue trunks playing Zerg to the west versus his opponent. Then we'll take Esports White Raw. He is in the red trunks playing Protoss to the south. And uh, I would not be surprised if we saw once again from White Raw this Forge fast expand piling on the lower ground. And there goes that probe already. He just prefers this style. He doesn't really like Gateway Expands anymore. Feels that he can successfully defend this on any map. And he also has the option to cannon block, or I mean pylon block, which he now does know after yesterday that three pylons does not work. Yes, the ESL version of uh, the Shattered Temple does not allow you to do that. It also does not allow you to do that with bunkers, if I recall correctly. That was a deliberate change made. It does actually work on the ladder version, so... Little dangers in tournaments that different versions of maps disallow certain strategies. Yeah, I mean, he still can use four pylons to block it, but you lose the value from the rush then because Definitely. you invest too much. Uh, he could still go three pylons with a cannon in, in that location, which we talked about yesterday as well. Uh, but against Idra, Idra is going to go spawn and pull first, so I really doubt we are going to see that uh, three pylon block now. He may do it, though, because yesterday, Rhett did also go for pull first. It wasn't quite as early as Idra, so uh, I doubt we'll see it from White Ra. Probably going for this 15 Forge, then into this expansion. Yep, we can just keep an eye on that and uh, see what's going on. I've got to say, he has not moved down there just yet. He's perhaps going to chrono boost that probe out there and immediately then follow it up. That's a if that's going to be a Forge, it's quite a late one. That's actually coming up on almost 17 supply there. Yeah, I mean, that is relatively late, but, you know, he's been a little bit greedy here, knowing that, you know, Idra, it wasn't that early of a spawning pool to put pressure on, no. though I, he's going to go directly into a Nexus. Idra may be able to run by once again, though, if he does build six lanes, but there are only four on the way, and uh, easily enough, White Rock can build a pylon onto the natural of Idra, and they'll force the four lanes to stay there, which will buy him enough time. Yep, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. His resource count has got, or maybe not. The interesting, he had the resources for it, and instead he decides to put a gateway down in full view of Idra. Yeah, I mean, he can go for a, for a kind of zealot pressure for some more lings rather than drones as well. Uh, but also, this may, this obviously means his cybernetic core is going to be a lot faster than usual, so he may want to do a timing attack from here. And White Raw, that's kind of the way he has successfully beaten clean sweep Zerg players with timing attacks, so that might be, may be a viable option from him as well, but also this gateway does extend the wall to prevent any Zergling runbys as well. Yes, it does, and that's probably a smart move considering there are four more lings on the way in order to uh, try and make that happen. No pylon block for uh, White Ra, though he is actually supply blocked briefly on 18, only for a few seconds, but it is delaying that Zealot by a pretty significant amount. Not so great when there's going to be eight Zerglings on the field, but it was showing mm. no sign of getting aggressive just yet. Looks like he just wants to take map control, working on the rocks here, thinking about taking an early third at the gold if possible. Yeah, I mean, that's what he wants to do here for sure. He has not taken gas yet. He's opted for a second queen from the main base as well. Will creep spread and move down to that natural. On the other hand, Wyra has taken double gases, which is going to allow him to go for the uh, research for the warp gate straight away and also for plus one attack. Uh, and then he will be able to get a sentry as well, just to be sure there is nothing coming. He may opt for a stalker though, as it is better on clearing up overlords, as there is a pesky overlord. And uh, actually the waypoint of the gateway is waypointed towards that third base as well. So a bit of cute pressure versus the no gas itcher right now. Not a bad idea, honestly, if he's able to get the unit count up and uh, able to uh, kite as much as possible. The risk here, of course, is that he gets caught out by the Zerglings, the shield on this Zealot going down. No surround yet, though, and since they don't have speed, that makes it a little bit difficult. He's going to try and grab that surround. White Rot gives him the slip right there, and the Stalker now coming in to reinforce. Will that Zealot go down? Hopefully not for White Rot. Looks like he's actually going to prefer to go for the Stalker instead. And White Rot once again slipping out of the grasp there, and an interesting decision. 
decision by him to go once again directly into a Stargate. Yeah, we have another Stargate coming out for him. Uh, so, I mean, I don't. he didn't really get too much scanning information with those links. He did see, I mean, with those zealots, sorry. He did see a lot of links being constructed, so he probably thinks that the, the way to take a third base on this map successfully as a Zerg player is to go ahead and kill at least the gold wrecks, maybe even the back rocks as well. Uh, but So he's probably expecting that. At the same time, with this amount of links, he has to wall off. He cannot really poke out too much either. And uh, that overlord is going to go down in the main base. And uh, probably looking for a Phoenix to begin with, then into uh, potentially Void Rays. But Idris thrown down a relatively early Roach Warren as well, probably for defensive purposes though. Yeah, and the Rush Warren uh, would be a little bit problematic if he decided to just go straight for him and do a big bust. That's the risk with going for a Stargate play. Yeah, getting a Void Ray up, very nice. Of course, you can do damage to Roaches, but can you kill enough Roaches in time? That's the problem. And uh, we do have the Evolution Chamber going down now, and that will be able to successfully defend against this uh, Void Ray, which is coming out. And it is being Chronobus that along with Phoenixes, so we are going to see a bit of pressure on this gold base. Idra has not creep spread yet. He's only just now building a third queen to creep spread to that base. And uh, there is a bit of a distance, especially with that little uh, hole area where the queen has to walk around. So this third base could be in a bit of danger too. He is building a spore curl in his main, but he hasn't uh, really put anything towards his third base. He is on the natural as well. So it looks like Idra is going to be building one or should be building one on the gold base straight away. Yeah, and I am a little bit worried for White Rod because Idra has been working his way through these rocks at the back here, which could end up being really, really dangerous if that's not spotted. However, Idra is forced to pull off oh, there as some harassment queens. comes in. Yeah, that queen is getting blasted here as the Phoenix grabs that one goes down. That Void Ray is well charged, but it's taken a lot of damage as well. But like you said, creep spread causing problems. Ling's coming in to try and deal with these couple of zealots, but there are enough on the ground to continue with the pressure but here come the speedlings from the back there's the lift he'll be able to grab at least one more queen maybe even the second queen here as well I, in fact almost certainly the second queen and white rod deciding to back off he could have killed that queen honestly but there's another queen coming in from the top so a little bit of harassment done and now ling's looking to push their way in and uh, perhaps just poke at the front here and uh, idris at a comfortable drone point right now 46 drones is squeezing in four more as well and uh, let's have a look at his vision. He doesn't really, he's trying to make an overseer in the main base and he does. Will he be able to see all these gateways? He sees one, two, three, and he's not gonna get the fourth. Oh, he does get the fourth as well. So he now knows, if I'm looking at his vision, there are two gateways on the front, plus four more being constructed in the main base. He knows there's at least six and it is a total of seven. So I'm pretty sure that Idra should be well prepared for this. He has scouted it, but at the same time, he has to deal with this harassment first. Uh, and he has got a Hydroden up, he will stop making Hydras very, very shortly. Yeah, he's uh, getting his Hydroden worked on by this one Void Ray. I don't know if that's going to be enough, honestly, and White Rod believes that it won't be either. There's too much of a risk of the Queens picking off the Void Ray, which is already in a fairly weakened state. Phoenix Harassment continues here, wants to try and lift up some Queens and nail them down as quickly as possible. Already four Queens on the map, but that's certainly going to be reduced quite rapidly. That Void Ray needs to leave! Oh, down it goes, and I don't, I don't agree with this Phoenix Harassment at all here. He is going to have to get out of there, especially with Hydras there as well, but I think this is just to be a prelude to this push that's coming in right here from White Raw. We'll see if he's got enough to break through this. It looks like he might. Hydra's being lifted up right here as White Raw forces his way through to the third. Uh, and White Raw makes a huge mistake in his main base. Actually uh, forgets about a single gateway, not turn it into a warp gate. So he's only on six gateways right now. And it looks like Idris should have enough. He has Lings and Hydras, which are good against Stalkers. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Stalkers without a Zealot blockade, uh, not so great against that many Lings. Good lift up at the back of there, able to eliminate a single Hydra's but you see the amount of damage those links are doing to that stalk account and uh, that will be successfully defended very nicely there by Idra a hairy moment but dealt with yeah he did lose about eight drones in total there as well but right now we have uh, White Rock backing off he's killing the back rocks now and this is the kind of zone where Idra can go ahead lava inject everywhere and make sure he does drone up heavily and he sure will he starts plus one attack and roach speed as well and uh, the transition into the latest stages of this game is now on its way. Overload spread and overload speed research, they are going to be moving around, taking areas on the map and trying to get scanning information, especially about the third base of Idra. And I'm sure we'll be seeing some Colossus switch very, very shortly to combat all these Hydras. Uh, and he should be taking a third base almost immediately now. That is White Ra.
Yep, that he should. And Idra is going to go and move in and try and deny that, but it's going to be too slow, unfortunately. The third base now already taken. And Immortal coming into the mix for White Ra as well. A good choice considering the Roach count, certainly. Although they do melt quite fast to Hydralisk, so it might be a little bit risky one way or the other. We're looking at eight Hydras and ten Roaches, and another seven Hydralisks being added on right now for Idra. And there's the macro hatch in the center there helping with the production. Idra currently slightly supply blocked. Not really too big a deal. He's Supply is significantly ahead of White Raw at the moment. This is interesting that Idris, is, you know, opting to, to continue to build units. He may just try to bust this third base down, and uh, he's still only building units. Roach speed is about to finish, as well as plus one attack is on its way. He's cut drones at 53, is still building roaches, and White Raw is definitely going to expect that um, the Idra is going to be droning up relatively uh, heavily from this point on. Does add a second cannon onto the natural though, and uh, he has two cannons on the third base, so I'm not too sure, but look at how many Hydras there are That's with plus nasty. one. nasty. With plus one, it's really nasty, and you'd actually notice that the Observer was skipped, so really he had no idea that this was coming, and that's going to be a lot of production facilities torn down here. White Ra looking to try and push this away, looking for good force field placement. He is able to deny quite a lot of the Roaches from attacking, throws that back. The the problem is, how long can he hold that? He needs to continue the war pins, get his immortal count high, and get a good solid engagement. And these frontal production facilities will be torn down. If that cyber core goes down, that means no more stalkers for a while. Yeah, and now he's in a bit of danger because creep is being spread from creature humans and overlords as well. Gateway is going to go down as well. Colossus is on the way, but there is no thermal lance, and Indra is just going to jump straight on top of this. Yeah, he's just crashing in on it. Some of the roaches can't fire from the back because of that force field placement, but I have to wonder if sheer weight of numbers will be enough. The Immortal is taken down. There's two more at the back right here as White Ra tries to get in on those Hydralisks, make sure that they don't rip their way through his forces. Unfortunately, his forces are collapsing, and more reinforcements coming in from the back, and the loss of those two gateways means that he can't can't warp in enough units to properly defeat this. The Hydra's ripping their way through those Zealots. A Colossus is out though, does not have Thermal Lance, so these Hydras may be able to engage correctly on Creep, but Idris smartly pulls back onto the Creep, waits for a lot more Roaches. As long as he has Roaches at the front of this army, he will be able to combat once again, but he is just waiting for those. What we need to see from Waiwa is sentries. Sentries and force fills may help him to hold on here. Yeah, he's trying to place a few force fields down. He doesn't have a lot of energy to make that happen. He's able to take down a one Roach here, but it comes down to this Colossus. How good is its engagement? How many Hydralisks can it kill? Can it clean this up? The economy of Idra is still pumping forward, but so is White Ra's. If he's able to get his production back up, the problem is look at the number of Hydras. Down goes the power and the robotics, and the Colossus is ripping through those Hydras, but it will fall very shortly. If it manages to somehow stay alive, maybe, just maybe he could do it, but it's not going to happen. Down goes the Colossus and Idra now all over that natural. Yeah, he's going to be able to clean up. The robotics facility is turned off, so they're only gateway units. GG. GG. And Idra, 2-0 now versus White Ra, and that's what happens when you decide to go for uh, Stargate harassment and then into 7-gate for this timing attack. Doesn't quite work out as Idra successfully defends, and then you take a third base and you tech to Colossus. There's a huge hole in your play where you can be struck down by Idra. And we saw that yesterday with Idra's play against Sho as well, where Sho was taking three bases. He was, you know, very late with his upgrades, really pushing his economy more than his actual um, army, trying to capitalize on Idra's going to build drones, going to build hatcheries kind of style. And Idra really reverting to a more aggressive style, hitting these timings as well. Well, that's the problem with dealing with Zerg, isn't it? The Zerg can instantly switch over from drone production straight into a lot of units. The macro hatch plus three bases and that number of queens. And funnily enough, the amount of Stargate units at the start were forcing quite a lot of queens out. Plenty of injects, lots of creep spread, as we noticed, made the Hydralisks more viable. And a nice path of reinforcement all the way down to that natural. The continued pressure in there. And as you saw, White Ra was not able to hold on there. Yeah, and the next map we are going on to is Antigua Shipyard, and this is an aggressive map simply because of that gold base in the middle. Uh, and you usually the passive player, um, if the passive player, if White Ross sits back, he's going to be able to take three bases relatively easily, and then a fourth comfortably straight after as well. Idra is definitely going to have to put pressure on early on in the game, mid stage of this game. He cannot let White Ross forge fast expand, take a fast third. Yep. Well. 
White Raw is 2-0 down. Is this where White Raw gets dangerous? We're I know. About to find he, out. he already told Idra at dinner last night, don't Watch get out. comfortable. Watch don't out. Don't get comfortable. That said, we are talking about a player of the caliber of Idra. It could be a 3-0 sweep. I guess we're about to find out, folks. We're going to go to a short commercial break. When we get back, Game 3 on Antigua Shipyard between Idra and White Raw. <laughs> 